All right, guys, so today we're going to look at the Eco Hitch. It's made in the USA and it allows your Tesla Model 3 to tow with a tongue weight of 300 pounds and a tow weight of 2,000 pounds. All the hardware you need will be in these little boxes on the side that they give you, so it'll include all the bolts and washers you need. You will need a few tools, but if you have them laying around, this could be perfect. And if you want an excuse to get more tools, this is also perfect. All right, guys, so after opening your truck, the first thing that you are going to want to take off is either the weather stripping or this plastic piece. The weather stripping is going to have like this sticky kind of gooey substance on it. So I'm going to do it after this to get this one off. All you got to do is pull up. Now to remove the weather stripping, it sucks. Gently pull it up. Remember, it has that stickiness on it, so it's going to resist coming up. But you're going to want to pull this off up until right above the tail light ish area. See guys, there's that like sticky stuff. It's all along here. It's only for this rear seal. All right, so you got the plastic off and you got the weather stripping off. Now we're going to remove the tail lights. Now the tail light removal is pretty straightforward. I'll have a video in the description below on how to remove the tail lights. Once you do it once, you kind of know how to do it all the time. It's mainly just one connector and three bolts. All right guys, you're gonna want to remove any mud flaps if you have them, otherwise you don't need to touch this bolt. So if you don't have any mud flaps, leave this alone. Hopefully you went and removed the tail lights. You can watch that video I have linked or just pause right here, remove the tail lights and come back. Next, we're going to go inside the wheel liner. All right guys, so after cleaning out my wheel well with a 90 degree pick, you can then use a 90 degree pick to take out the clips in the wheel well. So there's one clip right at the front and then there's two behind the tire. You stick your head in there, you'll see it, but it might be hard to reach in there if you don't have little arms. But yeah, these clips all need to be popped out. So again, there's three of them around this bottom part. And then there is a torque bit that you will need, a T20 or T25, one of the two. And there's a bolt right above that we're about to get to. Now for this installation, when I drop that rear skid plate, I do have to be super careful because I have underglow on there and there's not a lot of slack in the wires. So if you have underglow, make sure you just check that. Anyways, back to the important stuff. So the bolt that you're going to need to remove are the screw. It's a T20 or T25. I think it's a D20. It's right above the wheel. So if you look up from this angle, you can clearly see it. It's going to be inside that wheel liner, kind of behind the rear bumper. You're just going to want to undo that. It sits on a metal clip. Or actually, it goes into a metal clip. When you remove the bumper, this metal clip might fall off. Don't worry about it. Just keep it on the side so you can put it back later. All right, guys. So once these are flippity flappity on both sides, it's time to work on the bumper. We already got the tail lights removed. We already removed this bolt as well. Remember later when we're pulling this off, this sits on these little clips right here. And when you pull this off, you're gonna have to want to pull this over the clips, but we'll come back to that a little bit later. See these three clips? The metal just has to go over it, or the plastic. Plastic bumper has to just go over it because these clips are also holding it in. But we'll come back to that later. Now we're gonna go underneath the bumper. Under the bumper, I have an axis panel. You can use a flat head or we can use that 90 degree pick tool from earlier and move these little pins to the side and that will unlock them. Then we're just gonna pull this down and unclip it. So this is the access panel you might have on your Model 3. That's what the tow hitch should be coming out of. If you don't have this access panel, you're gonna have to cut a hole. I mean, technically, I think I'm supposed to cut a hole in this access panel, but we'll figure that out later. If you look to the side of that, there's going to be two tabs. I'm just gonna open them with my 90 degree pick tool, one on that side and then one on this side. These two tabs are hiding 10 mil bolts and you're just gonna want to undo those as well. And then underneath here, if you look, you're gonna see a bolt right here. And you're gonna see a bolt, same, basically same place, just on this side. It's gonna be like right here. So those two bolts, you're gonna want to remove. And then if we go deeper inside of here, you see this hole right here? There's gonna be one on this side right here. There's a bolt in each of them and you're gonna to want to remove those as well. So those two bolts and then a bolt on each side right here. All right guys, so I laid down a little bit of protection. You should probably lay down a little bit more protection, but now it's time to remove the bumper. And we're first going to start on the sides. All right guys, so on the sides right here, we're just gonna to wanna to pull away from the car and it will come off like this. There's a little metal piece that might fall off as well. And it's right here. This piece is for the T25 bit that we took out earlier. So keep this handy, put it actually right next to the T25. We're gonna to need to reinstall that later. So all these clips are pulled out. We can come to the top up here and I'm just gonna to wanna to pull up and away from the car a little bit to get them over these clips. All right, there we go. Pull that off, you can see it's over. 
Just gotta get this last one a little bit over. See if I could use this pry pick tool a little bit to, there we go. Now that whole thing is loose, we're gonna go around to the other side. And the same thing for this one, we're gonna start on the side, just pulling the bumper away from the car. Let's just go ahead and grab it right now. I'm gonna put it with that bit on the floor. And then all of these bottom clips, they've popped off as well. From there, we're gonna do this top. We just wanna pull over these clips. That one's still gonna give me a headache. So I'm gonna lightly try to pull it up and over. Cool, it's all over. I'm gonna pull a little bit more on the bottom side. Cool. Now that's all totally off right here. Let's get a close up view inside of here. You can see that there's also these black clips right here. See that one? You're gonna wanna be careful of those when pulling this off. So I'm gonna tug at it a little bit. You can see this back one over here. It's pulled out of its groove. We're gonna need to do the same thing with this one and then all of the rest down there, pulling them out of their groove. So you're gonna want to start from one side of the bumper once you ensure that part is off. Take out your 90 degree pry tool. We're using it so much in this video and gently use it to kind of pry up against those tabs. So as you can see in the video, I'm pulling it upwards while I'm pulling the bumper back towards me. And hopefully that will release the clips. You can just do this the entire way of the bumper. Now be careful though, because once you do this, it's the last thing holding the bumper to the car. So it will fall probably use more protection than I did, but use protection. Always use protection. Now, slight problem. Why isn't my bumper coming all the way off? Well, yours should, unless you're like me and you have underglow. Pro tip, if you wanted to, you could cut any zip ties that are holding slack yeah, of the underglow wire careful. together underglow and release everything. more wire, allowing you to pull the bumper away farther from the car. I didn't want to do this, so I made it hard for myself. But at this point, the bumper should pull away from the car. Again, I just had wires from my underglow, which was on that bottom skid plate, so I couldn't pull the bumper away. It'll be so much easier for you when you install it if you don't have underglow or if you just snip the zip ties and re-zip tie it that would have been so much easier than all of the just hassle i went through if you have an older three you'll also have a sensor cable the whole harness you just need to disconnect the big plug it should be on the right rear of the car make sure you disconnect that before you pull the bumper if you have any lights at the bottom replacing your reflectors like i do those are the black wires that are going along the side you can see where it's coming out from the tail light hole going all the way down that black thin wire those are for the rear not reflectors but now they're lights again you just got to be careful with any wiring harnesses here come check this out all right guys i really want you to see this left hand side this bracket holds the bumper in there's this rubber right here i don't know what the heck what this is hmm. interesting i wonder what that is I wonder if that's on the other side too. This wire is for the lights I have on the bottom right here, because they're not reflectors anymore, they're lights, super cool. So this is wired down through there, you can see that. This is pretty cool, these were the clips that everything sat on. We got specific part right here, I'm not sure exactly what it is, maybe it's a Bluetooth module, Wi-Fi module. And then this is for your sensors, if you had any, I don't have any, so it's kind of a dead plug going here. Cool, and this is the other side of the bumper. I just have to be careful again because of my underglow. The wire is right there, and I don't want to stretch it too much. It's almost at its maximum on that side. If we go on this side, I actually haven't checked this side yet, so we're about to do it together. We can see right there, that's the wire. It's also almost at its maximum. Now for you guys, if you don't have underglow, you can kind of just pull this whole bumper off. There's no need to leave it hanging. For me, I have underglow, so I'm gonna have to be a little bit careful. I think what I'll do is un I'll unbolt this side. You can see that there are bolts right here. I think there's only two. So we're gonna have to take all those nuts out on both sides. What I'm gonna do is I will have this bumper be on this side and then I'll remove these and then I'll shimmy the bumper on that side because right now I don't have any space. And I'll have to move it so that I have enough space to do the whole thing but it's totally fine. All right, let's get to it. Oh wait, see that side has two bolts only. Oh, that's interesting. Guys, check this out. So this side, by the way, we're gonna have to remove this black piece in a second just to get underneath here. But this side has two bolts, right? This side has three bolts. Weird, weird. I have a weird bumper, I guess. You know what? She's still a good girl and all. Let's see if I can. Ugh. Wiggle this over a little bit. I wonder if this is the first tow hitch install with the bumper still being on. Technically still connected. 
which like why would you do unless you have like me tons of wires running to it all right guys once you have all the bolts removed holding the crash bar to the subframe we're just gonna want to take the crash bar off if you don't have your bumper in the way you can simply just pull it off if you do and you're like me you're gonna have to shimmy it around the bumper the next thing that we're going to remove is this black bar at the top there's five bolts holding it in and at the very top on each side there's a clip instead it's super easy to to get off it's not even really holding it in it's just kind of holding it in place and then once you have that you can either unplug the sensors or just leave it hanging i would say unplug it but i left it hanging so do whatever you like crash bar is off this is lowered into place so that we can remove this bolt this bolt and this bolt see this side only has two coming out of it this side has three so weird wonder why that is but next we got to remove this bolt this bolt and then that bolt that's going to get rid of this piece of metal right here we actually don't need this anymore because the kit that we have you can see it's kind of sloped kind of curved and that is going to be replacing this metal and then the crash bar just goes on top of it. Hey guys, just want to say thank you if you enjoy the video so far. And if you do enjoy the video so far, you can always leave a like. And if you like the product, I have a description. You can check that out because it has the link to it inside of there. You can do so much with a tow hitch, right? Like you can build a camera mount, which is what I'm going to do. A little secret project that I'm working on, which is going to be so cool. I can't tell you about it yet, but make sure you stay subscribed to see it. You can have bike racks and you know what this in my opinion is much better than a roof rack because a roof rack will definitely significantly increase the drag on your car diminishing your range however this there's no drag only a little extra weight this is the better option i don't have a discount code at least at the time of recording this so sorry about that but you should definitely go check this out tow hitches just make the car so cool and so versatile also i think with the actual hitch part installed it, it makes the car look more aggressive i'm just gonna say it anyways thanks again for watching let's get those bolts off and move on to the next step all right guys so now you're just going to want to get the washers that came with the kit and you're going to put them on all the bolts that are coming out of the car once you remove that piece that you need to remove this way you don't have different metals contacting each other it's going to be for vibrations and also you don't want two metals touching each other it's always great to use a washer now you're going to want to take the entire ego hitch and mount it on the bolts of the car remember make sure those washers are in place once you put that on there's bolts sticking out of the eco hitch as you saw earlier i'm going to put washers on those bolts as well and now we are going to tighten the nuts that were originally holding the other pieces to the subframe we're going to tighten this to about 60 newton meters or 44.2 pound feet of torque i just put on screen the torque specifications from tesla i'll also have this linked in the description below from there we're just going to want to reattach the crash bar to the car and we're going to put this on the bolts that are sticking out and then use the nuts to secure it to the tow hitch to the subframe of the tesla but that's pretty much it it's just recessed in there it sits it's got this nice groove guys torque lift thought this through this is an awesome awesome hitch ah it's so sick and made in the usa check that out you don't know how tempted i am to just drive with my butt just on the ground it's like i'm bagged but with horrible fitment but it's like i'm bagged honestly this is kind of a look kind of a look dang it anyways i'm just sitting over here because well i don't really want to i don't really want to do it i mean i got i just finished done getting done talking about the torque wrench and then i just got tired of all of a sudden but okay we go back we go back now it's time to put this back on so i have already secured it with just two of the bolts two out of five so put this back on kind of line everything up if you unclipped any clips you know clip them back in and so we have two bolts here we have one in the middle and then we have two on each side one here and then one there we're pretty much done guys so i just mounted the crash bar there's this big piece right here and all we're gonna do now is put the bolts in so we're going to use a 15 millimeter driver and make sure you use your socket wrench these are also 50 uh, foot pounds of torque with I think if it's different, I'll put it on screen somewhere around anywhere. Anyways, uh, we're just gonna put these two in and then the three on that side and pretty much it. You can see the tow hitch thing nicely under there. Super carefully, try to put it on to the top part so we can um, have it rest there a little bit. We got the right side on, the left side's not going on. Oh, it's cause it's a little over the bumper. All right, there we go. 
Be careful not to scratch your paint as you're pulling this up. That would not be good. All right, so now that's kind of resting on top. Pull this around. Okay, when you're putting the bumper on, it's super important that you do not make this mistake. No other videos talk about it. They actually don't talk about two things, but I digress. So when you put that lower skid plate, remember it's still attached to the bumper, the black part, the long black part on the bottom, you want to put that over where, like where you took it out from, right? You want to make sure that's aligned. That is so important before you start putting the tail lights, the bumper, everything back together. Make sure that bottom skid plate is aligned. Cannot stress that enough. You have to make sure that it's aligned and it fits good before you start putting everything else back together. Next, we're gonna put the side back on. So to do this, make sure it's all clipped into place and the metal clip that came off. So the part that has the bit that's protruding out, that needs to be facing downwards. And when you're clipping it on, clip it on the edge of the fender, the rear fender. Do not clip it on the bumper part. So clip it on the part that stayed on the car, the body part that stayed on the car this entire install. Clip it on that with the little nub facing down and then put the T25 bit in. Screw that in and then secure the clips that were holding in the wheel liner. So once you smack it all back into place, the metal clip. Okay, I'm gonna go at an angle just so you can see it. So, so tilt your head guys. Everybody tilt their head. Should look like that, where you got a little, the like kind of nubby bit sticking below here, so it separates them. There you go. That's how you do it. All right, guys. So we're doing the tail lights. I did that side already. This side, you're just gonna need a black 10 mil bolt right here, and then you're going to need to put it into the two holes uh, when it comes through. So it'll be like right here and like up there. And then you're gonna have to plug this back in. So just like this one. You can see I have the two nuts placed in. These are the two nuts. Of course, that black tab is placed in. And then you're just going to want to plug this connection back into here. You should have a tab. Mine broke off, so I have to secure it with electrical tape, but then you would press that tab in, and that's pretty much it. We're pretty much done now. Um, tail lights are back in, and I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this part sucks. So tuck the carpet behind the weather stripping on both sides. We'll get to, if this falls down, how to fix this in a second. But for this, put the black plastic on and then start putting the weather sealing on the frame. Now, this back part sucks because of all this sticky stuff right here. You gotta get this exterior groove to go in between here and this middle groove to sit down. So it's kind of finicky and it takes a while, but have patience because I'm struggling with you guys on this one. But just make sure this actually sits in because this is your weather ceiling and you don't want water getting in your trunk. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. Now, this is just me unboxing it. So if anyone wanted to see that, it's 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 here. Now, don't forget to put the bolts that you remove from the bottom back in. Remember, there's two under the little floppy flaps that are next to the axis panel that we removed. So those two bolts, two bolts on the side. There's like two or three. And then there's two bolts up front. Make sure all those are in so your skid plates held up to the car. And yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below and stay subscribed to see the crazy surprise I have that I'm gonna be doing with this tow hitch and the camera mount I'm gonna make for it. All right guys, so this is what the tow hitch looks like. You can barely even see it. Actually, if you look from this angle, you can't see it at all. You can only see it if you look under here. So check this out. I don't have this part installed yet. You'll have to wait for that in a different video for when I mount something on it. But if we look at it, check this out. You can still fit the access panel right here and you can barely even see the hitch. It doesn't protrude at all. This is awesome. Hidden, and you can even cover it when you're not using it. But yeah, that's pretty much it.